Good morning all. I've been having technical difficulties this morning. Um, so I'm trying to get myself set up here. My Zoom to worship wasn't working and then my computer wouldn't let me do uh, the live so I had to go to my other tablet. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I know it's not quite raining yet. It was just starting to drizzle a little bit, but I want it to be safer than sorry. Um, so, um, so we will try to do this as best we can. Um, I can bring anybody. It says I can bring people on camera. If folks would like to join me on camera, um, I can do that. Um, but if you want to pull up, the um the bulletin and i will just um we'll do the best we can this morning so um i thought i had everything well but it's not anyway <sighs> let's take a moment and breathe a little bit and get ourselves in the frame of mind for worship this morning uh, this is, uh, we do celebrate uh, the season of Epiphany. Uh, with the, We had the coming of the wise men to Jesus following the star. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. And so, um, we'll let, uh, so we do ask for prayers for all those who are listed in your bulletin. If you have additional prayers that you would like to have offered up this morning, please do uh, include them in your feed. Um, I would ask for ongoing prayers for my uh, mother-in-law, uh, Bonnie Boyd. Um, she's been in hospice care, and it looks like she, it may be getting close. Um, so if you could keep um, keep all my extent, well, keep all of Michael's family in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. <clears throat> so let us begin now with our call to worship. And hopefully, you can pick that, uh, pull that up, and join me. I will just read all parts, I guess, this morning. So arise, your light has come. We seek the light of love. Follow the star, for it guides our ways. See the star as it rises, rises forth and shines with grace. The light that we seek, that we need, is the star of Jesus. As we gather, we do pause together to offer our confession and our need for Christ's grace. And so we pause for a moment of silence and self-examination. Merciful God, Jesus shows us all the ways that we fall short. He also provides a way out of the holes we dig ourselves into. Forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices, be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jesus does indeed forgive. Jesus cleanses us of our sins and recreates us in God's image. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Go and walk free of guilt, shame, and sin. You are made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite you to find the, the hymns um, elsewhere um, so that you can, you can listen to them or, or uh, sing along with them at another place. Uh, but we will skip all the musical sections this morning. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Let us go to our prayer of the day. Holy God, we rejoice. you rejoice with us when we celebrate our relationships. When Jesus turned water into wine, he honored the host. Teach us to honor our relationship as Jesus did. Amen. Um, so I'm going to just sing that since this is an easy one for the children's message for the children's, um, stuff, uh, it's to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'll just sing it. So we sing a little bit this morning. It says, Jesus, Jesus, little one, Lord of morning star and sun, 
Lord of what is near and far, Lord of tiny distant star, Jesus, Jesus, little one, Lord of morning star and sun. Jesus, Jesus, in the night, Lord of darkness, Lord of light, Lord of Jupiter and moon, Lord of summer time and noon, Jesus, Jesus, in the night, Lord of darkness, Lord of light. And our first reading is from the Psalms, Psalm 104. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the, white, the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel for this second week, uh, before this baptism of our Lord Sunday, is from John's Gospel, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew it knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, well, this is certainly not how I plan to do things this morning, uh, even with deciding to go virtual. Uh, things have kind of gone awry. Uh, things do not always go as we planned, um, even at weddings. Uh, one of the things when I uh, work with couples as they're preparing for their wedding, uh, they sometimes can get so caught up in the details that they're, that they're worried about um, about all kinds of things and sometimes it's just insignificant things that w doesn't really necessarily make a difference whether you have them or not and so I t always try to remind them that the most important thing for them is that the two of them are there their wedding license and me or someone like them uh, and that it's really about the vows they're telling to one another all the other details are extra so on the one hand when we see this this reading of, of the wine running out um, we're like, well, that's too bad, you know, but maybe they can switch to something else, you know, drink something else. Um, but as with John's gospel, as we'll see as we continue through the gospel uh, over these next few months or so, is that there's always the surface level meaning and then there's something deeper. Because it's not just so much about an inconvenient thing that the wine has run out, but wine in that time, or particularly at weddings or special occasions, was all about uh, the sense of joy, of sharing the joy of, of the occasion, of sharing a sense of celebration. And, and here we're told the wedding had been going on for three days. Now, it often was protracted, was over time, and, it, and, and the, the hosts or the couple or the families of the couple it was very important to, for a sense of hospitality and sharing in the joy of this, that there should be enough wine for everyone else. It wasn't so much about, you know, having an open bar or so that people have something to drink, but it was a matter of celebration, of joy. And in some ways, it seems like the joy had run out for them, um, just a symbolic more in, in the uh, lack of wine at the wedding. Now, we don't know whose wedding this is. It's never said um, we don't know if it was somebody in Jesus's family, if it was just friends, 
Um, we don't know why they ran out. Um, is it that Jesus, instead of just a plus one, brought a plus 12 uh, with him, he and all his disciples? Um, but all we know is that they did run out. And Jesus' mother comes and says, you know, Jesus, what, you know, it, they've run out of wine and wanting him to do something. Uh, did she know already that what he was um, going to be engaged in, of, of who he was, that he could do this? Um, and what's interesting here, and more kind of an aside, is that, first of all, Mary, uh, Jesus' mother, only appears here at the wedding of Cana, and then not again until Jesus' crucifixion, when Jesus then um, says to her, uh, says to the beloved disciple, or says to John that, you know, here is your mother, here is your son, and, and gives her over uh, into a new relationship. And she's never called Mary here, and, and it kind of almost even seems a little rude. He says, woman, you know, to her to say that. But he says, the, my hour has not come. What is it to me? What is it to me that the wine is out? What is it to me that the joy has run out? Now, she's not forcing him to do it. This is not the Jewish mother saying, do this or else. She's just saying, do whatever he tells you. Whether he tells you to do something or not, He then, she then says, this is your opportunity to do this. And so the water is turned into wine. Now, recently I was at a bookstore and always go through the used book section, or not used book section, but the, the cheaper book section to see what I can find. And of course it's at the office, but I found a book that says how to turn water into wine. And there is a, some sort of scientific thing that you can do that I don't think it's really wine, but it's, you know, red, becomes red uh, with whatever scientific thing it is. Um, so it's not so much even then here about the miracle, but what it tells us about Jesus. Because look at this. I mean, let's do a little bit of math here. That here we have six stoned water jars. Now it's stone so that they were they were um, could not be infiltrated by other things. They were not porous in that sense. So they would stay, whatever was in it would stay good. So there's six of those, each holding 20 to 30 gallons of water of water each so do the math so on average it's at least you know 120 to 150 maybe 180 gallons of wine that's a lot that's much by much more than they could ever need for this occasion and yet here it is here it is in an abundance here it is in not just in terms of the miracle but the sign john's gospel always points to it as a sign not as a miracle but as something that points to who god is that lifts up the reality of who god is and here we have a sense of not only joy but of the abundance of god's greatness the abundance of god's love the abundance of what god has to offer to us on thursday on january 6th it was epiphany day always on January 6th, wherever it falls. Sometimes we get it on a Sunday, often not. Um, but Epiphany is a story of the, of the Magi who followed the star to Jerusalem, or not to Jerusalem, to Bethlehem. Um, and so they followed the star probably for many days. They left their own countries. That this star was significant enough that they dropped everything to go find this new king. This was something beyond anything else they had ever uh, encountered or seen or experienced in their life. And so they followed this star. And we're not told where they come from or how far they've come, but just that they are from the east and they have traveled a long way. And so they follow the star so that they can find Jesus. We too can look to the stars to give us a sense of God's infinite love. I love looking up at the night sky when it's clear, even when it's cold, to look up into the night sky and to see all the stars in the heavens, to think about how far that light has come that the scientists have been able to figure out, just to know that even some of those lights that we see now maybe have, have dimmed or those planets, those suns have gone out, but still that light reaches us. And that how infinite that is the sense of the infinity of our of our God, the eternal nature of our God is seen in the heavens that we get a sense of that. And just as God said to Abraham, your, your descendants will be greater than the stars of the sky. We too can look to the stars and see that God's love 
is greater even than the stars in the sky, that God's love is so abundant, it is beyond our comprehension, more than even 180 gallons of wine, more than we could ever imagine. Now this week I sent out to, to most people, if you did not receive uh, something from me, but um, and of course because I'm at home, I don't have any of them here at home, but I sent out stars um, to everyone. So um, you should have received an epiphany card from me that has a star in it uh, with, a, with, a, um, with a word on it. Uh, and these are our star words for, for the season of epiphany. Um, and so what I'm inviting you to do is to see the ways in which that word speaks to you in your own lives of faith, that it might be God's word given for you, that it might be God's grace given for you, that at first it may be like, Pastor, I have no clue either, you know, what this has to do with my life. So, so take the opportunity and look up synonyms to that word or look up Bible passages or quotes and see how that, how it, um, how that word maybe be, is used in other vicinities. And if you have problems with that, just let me know and I can help you with that as well. But, um, so that, um, you can, um, I just lost my train of thought, so that you can use that word as a way of to pray, to pray particularly through this epiphany season, which will take us through January and February um, before we get to Lent, to let this word speak to you in the midst of your lives of faith. Now, if you need more words, because I only sent one per household, if you need more words, I have a lot of them um, that I have uh, at church, um, and I can give one to you, um, or if you would like a different word, uh, if it's not there. But to see how God reveals God's abundance, reveals God's grace, reveals the, the abundance of God's love to each of us in these various words, in the ways in which God does, look, does offer to us hope and grace and love. So this miracle of, wine, of water into wine is more than just about Jesus being a good guest at a party, but is more about God's abundance and most certainly the, the abundance of God's love that's poured out for all of us. As we continue in the epiphany season, we will see the signs that point us more and more to Jesus, that lead us as the stars led the wise men to Jesus, those things that lead us into closer relationships with God so that we may proclaim with our whole lives, thanks be to God. Amen. So I invite you now to join me as we do profess our faith. Uh, we continue to use um, on this week uh, the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we raise our prayers in this time as a witness to the word of God that dwells in our midst. Lord, you are capable of turning the ordinary into something miraculous. Bolster our faith and give us confidence to, to do whatever it is that you require that your glory might be shown through the humblest of acts. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. You've given us blessings far beyond our imagination and joys which surpass our own powers to produce. 
gladden our hearts with the fruits of your creation, given to be enjoyed, cherished, and shared. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. Sometimes we need encouragement to carry out those things of which you have made us capable. Use us and others to call forth the best and highest purpose in each other, even when we don't feel so inclined. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. You have fed us with the best and blessed us with life abundant. Bring healing where there is suffering, infirmity, or lack of any kind. We lift up especially, as well as, Loretta, Barbara, George, John, Kyle, Maisa, Cindy, as well as those who have no one to name them and those who do not know Christ's name. Wondrous God, your saints keep constant company around your throne with joy surpassing any earthly celebration. Encourage our faith through your, their example and save us a place at your heavenly table. Wondrous God, hear our prayer. Your other petitions may be offered up online or silently in your hearts. All things we place in your trustworthy hands, knowing that our concerns, our desires, and our loved ones are safe in your keeping. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We can share a word of peace with one another in this time. Peace, peace, peace. Someday we'll be able to do it the way we want to. Uh, we don't have an offering music um, right now, um, but as always, I encourage folks to share their offerings online. Um, so we will... Um, be doing uh, we'll do the, our offering prayer uh, and then we'll go to the end of the service and so we place these gifts before the Lord in thanksgiving for all that has been entrusted to us loving God you provide for all our needs both the important ones and the ones we may take for granted may we never doubt that each act of kindness is blessed with your grace and received with thanksgiving Pour your blessings upon these offerings and all those who give them, that we may be joined to one another in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the, uh, the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Um, so we do take the opportunity to share mission, um, minis mission and ministry announcements. You can find those in the Trinity Weekly. That is on our um, on our webpage. Um, just a couple of notes. Well, first of all, um, uh, I'm sorry if I didn't get. Uh, I I have an incomplete um, email list. I think of uh, folks to send out the the the, uh, the notice to about um, the change in worship this morning. Um, so I will make sure that I get that updated. Normally, things would be sent out from the office, but because it's a weekend. Um, I just did it myself, so I am sorry for all those I missed. Um, this will also be posted up on um, YouTube when we're done, uh, as well as you can watch it. If you've only come in late, you can watch it at any point. It will still be up here um, so that you can um, have worship, as always, at any time that you'd like. So we were supposed to start uh, going back to two services, so hopefully, barring any more bad weather, um, that we will once again... Um, try next Sunday to be back to two services at uh, 9 and 10 30 um, and so please do join us for that um, we had a, a lovely evening on Friday night um, for our first Friday while um, our our group was small 
Uh, we had a good time. We thank the Illusions of Our Land uh, dance group who shared uh, the gifts of their folk dance with us. It was quite beautiful. Uh, we did also um, stream that live, so you can see that here on, uh, on our Facebook page uh, if you'd like to see it. Uh, they've been um, using our building, uh, and this is kind of their way to pay us back uh, for that. So we do give them thanks for that. Um, the annual meeting is coming up at the end of the month. We are looking for nominations for church council. We're also looking for folks who would be willing to serve on the nominating committee. We currently do not have a nominating committee. Um, so we have at least two of our council members who cannot run again. We have another one that could run again. So we need to fill at least two, maybe three spots on council. So if you or if you know of anyone, know of anyone who would like to be nominated for church council, please do that. Uh, please do let me or uh, Debbie Lyon know who's council president or Ralph Rudolph who's vice president. Um, try to think of other announcements because I don't have that here in front of me. Um, the Epiphany Stars, as I mentioned in my sermon, uh, if you did not get a card with Epiphany Star, would like more, I can give, uh, can pick up more for you. Those are at the church office. Um, but please do look at our attorney weekly for things coming up um, as we do continue we have begun our wednesday night um, bible study again we're doing the gospel of john so we just did an overview this past week um, and we will also be starting that on uh, thursday morning in person at 10 a.m uh, and we'll be switching that up to the um, uh, fellowship hall uh, for, for that group so if anyone's interested in being a part of that we continue to keep all folks in prayers uh, who are affected by COVID. I know a number of people who have tested positive for that because of the new variant, um, but, and, but particularly do keep all of our um, medical community in your prayers as those numbers rise. Uh, if there are other things, you're always free to, to post them here on our Facebook page or send them to me. Uh, we can get those out as well. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. May he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just don't go out with the ice. So I hope you all have a blessed day. Um, stay warm, stay safe, uh, stay inside if you can. Um, like I said, it doesn't look bad now, but it looks like we were going to be um, hovering on that line all day. So, uh, so do keep safe. So we will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.